Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and today I would be talking about the surgical procedures or surgical options in the treatment of Meniere's disease. In my previous video, I did discuss about the symptoms of Meniere's disease, what are the causes of Meniere's, what are the probable causes of Meniere's disease, how you come to a diagnosis and what are the medical modalities of treatment that you have. Now, what one needs to remember is that there is a very small subset of patients who would not actually do well with medical line of management or even with transtim to injections. Now these very small percentage of patients may require a surgical procedure. Keep the symptoms of Meniere's disease under control. Now what are the things that we keep in mind or take into consideration when selecting a surgical uh, option for a patient with Meniere's disease? Now there are three surgical options that are being commonly followed now. One is endolymphatic sac decompression. So if you can kind of recollect in the previous video I did mention that Meniere's disease is because of distension or enlargement of the endolymphatic sac. Now when you kind of decompress the sac and lay it open, now probably you could kind of elevate the symptoms of Meniere's disease. Now this is a fairly simple procedure. Now the advantage here is that you could probably kind of preserve the hearing levels as whatever the patient has at the time of presentation. It does not involve anything intracranial in the sense you need not breach the dural barrier and go intracranially. However, this is not something which is said to give long-term results. Now probably these patients may be symptom free for a period of five years and probably can have recurrence of symptoms because this opening can kind of close off and the patient starts having symptoms again much few years down the lane. Now the second option that we have is vestibular nerve section. So here basically you have a, a vestibular nerve and cochlear nerve together which form the auditory nerve. So any kind of disturbance in the inner ear is kind of relayed to the brain through this vestibular nerve. So if you could kind of cut or disconnect this vestibular nerve, whatever happens in the inner ear is not transmitted to the brain. So it is actually a kind of cutting off this relay, cutting off the signals from reaching the brain. Now this is something that gives more than 90% results. The hearing levels can be preserved to a certain extent, yes. And the disadvantage here is that you will have to go through the barriers or the covering of the brain, open up the dura and go intracranially to kind of transect or cut this nerve. So you can expect all those kind of morbidities that you would come across with a patient undergoing a neurosurgical procedure when in a patient with uh, undergoing a vestibular nerve section. So it is a more aggressive procedure. Yes, uh, the morbidities associated with it may be slightly higher when compared to the other procedures described for Meniere's disease. The third option is labyrinthectomy. Now this is probably the most radical of the surgical options and something which is said to give a near 100% results. Now it involves destroying the entire labyrinth or the inner ear. So the issue here is that this is not a procedure which can be recommended in a patient who has serviceable hearing. So if the patient has a dead ear, no hearing in that ear at the time of presentation, then you are justified in doing a labyrinthectomy. So you kind of destroy the entire ear and that sets the ear free from all these symptoms. Now if the patient wants hearing that ear, then probably you could consider doing some kind of a uh, procedure like a cochlear implantation in the same sitting as a labyrinthectomy so that the hearing can be restored. So you need to take into consideration so many things, the hearing levels of the patient, the age of the patient. And this is something that we often discuss with the patient before taking a call on what exactly would be the uh, right surgical procedure for that particular patient. Thank you for watching.